South Korea, a land of ancient tradition and contemporary life. A fascinating world with 5,000 years of history and several modern cities. Few countries in the Far East offer such a diverse range of the exotic. It is known as the land of the silent morning. Seoul is the country's economic and cultural center. A metropolis of 12 million inhabitants who are proud of their ancient culture. At one time, the city could only be entered through huge and strongly fortified gates that are today situated amid the hustle and bustle of Seoul's traffic and still protected by the Royal Guard. These fine entrance gates lead to a once forbidden and secret world, the old king's residence of Chandok, the palace of wonderful blessing. King Taizong of the Joseon dynasty ordered the construction of this palace complex in 1405. However, its center line was not built in the customary north-south position. Throughout the centuries, the palace was devastated by both war and fire. But it was rebuilt and the main structure was left intact. There is a beautiful expansive garden, Hu Wong, the Forbidden Garden, that was used only by the royal family. King Sejong the Great had the Diok Sogung built for his elder brother, Prince Wolsan. And when the Japanese destroyed the palace, he came to reside here. Prior to the construction of the Chandok Palace, for seven years the Diok Sugung served as the royal residence. The city's most popular markets are situated close to the large old city gates, as is the Nam Dai Moon Market on the other side of the gates. The War Museum is a reminder of the Forgotten War. At that time, the United States of America and 20 other countries took part in a United Nations military operation to support South Korea against the forces of North Korea and China. In 1988, the 24th Olympic Games took place in Seoul. For this, the Olympic Park was created. With seating for 64,000, the World Cup Stadium was inaugurated in 2002 for the Football World Cup. From the River Han, there's a splendid view of this modern city and its apartment blocks. A trip on one of the many ferry boats is a good way to get around. Once a year, in May, National Children's Day is celebrated. Naturally, it's a day that focuses on children, those who will one day be running the country. A modern shopping complex boasts the largest aquarium in Korea, the Coex Aquarium. An underwater wonder world containing 90 tanks of various sizes. Each evening, the Nanta cooking show is a sellout. <laughs> a frenetic performance of rhythmic music and movement. The performers tell jokes while they cook. And the plates are not carried, but thrown. Electric drills are used to mix the ingredients. And the one female and three male cooks turn the cutting of vegetables into a spectacular show.
In New York, there's even a Nanta Theatre on Broadway, and it also tours all over the world. Now back to South Korea's long history. It has a palace with a sonorous name, Gyeongbokgung, the Palace of Happiness, one of the city's main sites. In 1392, the Joseon dynasty was founded in Gyeongseon. Shortly afterwards, the king and his household moved to what is now named Seoul, where a new palace was built. During invasion by the Japanese in 1592, the palace was destroyed by fire. However, in 1865, King Hyung Seon ordered its reconstruction. The daily changing of the guard is a popular event. It is how both the former royal palace and the city gates were once protected by the military. In Confucianism, the command of reverence is also valid after death. So the Korean people have developed a deep reverence for the worship of their ancestors. Each year, a special event takes place at an equally special location. The worship of royal ancestors at the Zhongmyo Shrine. Once a year, on the first Sunday in May, an important ceremony takes place here. Each of the chambers is opened and entered by numerous dignitaries. It's a well-rehearsed event. These rituals are accompanied by the oldest oriental classical music in the world. And finally, the last descendant of the royal family appears in order to honor his ancestors. In 1969, a television mast, the Ensoul Tower, was built on the southern mountain of Nam San. Since 1980, its viewing platform has been open to the public and visitors are able to enjoy the view across the city both day and night. Thirty kilometers south of Seoul is the fortress town of Su Won. At the end of the 18th century, the Huaxiong Fortress was built. It's now a World Heritage Site. An impregnable four to six meter high wall measuring nearly six kilometers in length surrounds the city of Su Won and Paldasan Mountain. King Zhongzhou, the 22nd king of the Joseon dynasty, had the fortress built as both a tomb for his father and also for administrative purposes. Almost the entire complex has been rebuilt. The huge dimensions of the complex soon become apparent. Nearby, vegetables are offered for sale. Where the fortress wall meets the river that still continues to flow through the complex. On the other side of the river, the wall ascends a hill. It took only two years to construct the impressive wall that has survived right up to the present day. On the hills, various pavilions stand alongside military buildings. Young soldiers in traditional uniform make a good holiday snapshot. Four main gates, various fortified towers, watch and signal towers, secret corridors and bunkers. Each of these was the finest innovation of their day. The fortress extends for 130 hectares. The distance from one main gate to the other is such that visitors are transported by a small dragon train.
outside Seoul is the Korean folk village. This museum village features traditional day-to-day -day life throughout the centuries. Traditional farmhouses are on show. Also a Confucian shrine, administrative buildings and numerous sheds. Old farm tools are exhibited and can also be tried out. These were used in the arduous days of pre-mechanization. Several colorful music groups appear frequently in the inner courtyards. The sound of drums, cymbals and flutes is omnipresent. The music reaches a climax as the musicians march faster and faster. Handicrafts are also on display in the farm buildings. A farmer's wife sits at an old hand loom and a farmer braids mats as in bygone days. 240 huts and small cottages recall the past. This place is popular with both young and old alike. A blacksmith demonstrates how iron was once worked on an open fire. And there's even a Buddhist temple. Food is available and there's much to see. The next show begins in the arena. The music gets faster and wilder. Acrobatic dancers spin around at great speed to the mesmerizing drumbeat. This kind of entertainment was once popular with the rural population and the performers moved from village to village. Applause is guaranteed. Especially when a seated man winds a long ribbon around his head. We're now going to travel to one of the most beautiful places in South Korea. Around 60 kilometers north of Andong is one of the country's 10 most famous temples. Busiok Sa. The trees here are wonderful. After a short walk, we reach the beautifully located temple complex that extends across a tree-covered hill. Pretty as a picture. When in 676 AD, the revered monk Ui Sang returned from China, he brought with him the doctrine of Hui Om Buddhism and founded the Avatamska sect. This took place in the 16th year of King Munmu's reign, a monarch who ruled over the Silla kingdom after the Gogoyo and Baikiek dynasties had been defeated. During this cultural high season, numerous great works of art appeared. With the Muriang Suyon, Busiok Sa boasts one of the oldest wooden buildings in the country. Objects such as wooden fish and drum are particularly precious, and the wall paintings have survived the centuries. The Temple of Floating Stone is South Korea's finest temple. That is according to Professor U Hong Gyeon's book on Korean culture. Halfway down the road to Andong and hidden within a tree-covered hillside is a Confucian academy, Dozan Xiao Wang. The complex extends across several terraces and contains some small buildings that comprise libraries, studies, shrines and living rooms.
In the 16th century, the scholar Togye Yehang founded the school in the remoteness of the magnificent landscape. However, it was not inaugurated until four years after his death. The idea of the academy was to educate the country's future leaders. At that time, the Joseon dynasty was in power. Confucianism became the state doctrine. Various reforms were introduced and culture was at an all-time high. So the Korean alphabet was developed, political and economic innovations took place, and Hanyang, today's Seoul, became the capital city. In 1970, the Dozan Seowon was renovated and designated as a sacred place by the government. Since then, Yi Huang features in the country's banknotes and the complex is often featured on film. Close to Andong in the Gyeongsangbukdu district is the village of Haho, a protected monument. In 1976, a huge dam was built here and the small village was relocated to the banks of the Nakdong River. With its 130 traditional buildings, it's a popular tourist attraction. Some of the farmhouses are covered with straw or tiles and are surrounded by stone walls. Arts and crafts are on display and calligraphy can also be admired. This village features an attraction that is well known far and wide. For 600 years, the Haho masked dancers have been performed by the villagers. Musicians dressed in white accompany several masked dancers. Masked men battle against numerous bulls and depict the daily life of the villagers. Traditional masks depict various moods, such as melancholy, happiness and foolishness. Each performance is accompanied by suitable music. Wooden carvings, colourful paper umbrellas and small restaurant huts decorated with vegetables are popular with the local tourists. Many of the houses are open to the public and various signs make travelling through the village an informative experience. Let's hope that the Pung San Yu clan will maintain their age-old traditions for many more years to come. South Korea's most famous monastery is located in the Gaya San National Park. The route leads alongside a mountain stream up to Hainsa. Today, this complex with its 90 buildings is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Over the centuries, it's become one of the main Buddhist centers in the East. Hainsa was built in 802 AD, in the third year of King Aizhang's reign during the Silla period. It is of the Huayanzhong doctrine. Each of its temples, living quarters and shrines was once destroyed but subsequently rebuilt. It's a magical place of silence and contemplation.
The legend of its foundation goes like this. King Ai Zhang's wife became very ill and medicine proved to be useless. Eventually, two monks cured her. In gratitude, the king fulfilled their wish, which was to create the Hainsa Monastery. After climbing the stairs beyond the main hall, there is a great treasure. No less than 80,000 wooden print plates are stored here. Tripitaka Koreana is the name of the largest collection of Buddha's text in East Asia. These writings contain the pleas for the defense of the Mongolian invasion. This text formed the foundation of most future Buddhist writings and the buildings in which it is stored was designed to blend in with the rest of the complex. Floral wheels and frightening stone dragons continue to protect the stairways and corridors of the temple complex from evil spirits. A number of visitors are gathered in the lowest temple courtyard for a special ceremony. Both morning and evening, the monks strike a huge ceremonial bamboo drum. The sound of the bup go is said to be able to save the souls of domestic and also wild animals. Yangdong village is typical of the Zhejiang period. In the 15th century, a number of residential buildings were constructed on the banks of the Alak River. It was mainly Yang Ban that settled here, an educated elite, many of whom worked as functionaries in the Zhejiang dynasty that was in power until 1910, when the Japanese annexed this region. Several buildings surround a small inner courtyard. The dwellings are encircled by a stone wall that contains a traditional gateway. Yangdong was also the birthplace of Son So, who played a key role in the quelling of a revolution against King Sejo in 1467. His famous grandson, Hoi Zhai, was born there. Later, Catholicism spread among the villagers. This was due to the fact that the local nobility was very open-minded in religious matters. During the period of Japanese occupation, 22 of the villagers' young people were chosen to go to Seoul or Japan to pursue their studies. This was deemed a great honor. Traditional South Korean dance has its origin in prehistoric religious rites. Among its tribes, the worship of the gods by way of music and dance has been undertaken since time immemorial. In the royal courts of the Three Kingdoms, there was a special dance. A dance accompanied by the Zhang Gu, a drum that is struck by a female dancer. Another dance is the Bu Chai Chum. The female dancers are attired in hambok, and with their peacock feather fans, they perform gentle gestures. The dances that were performed in the royal courts were quite diverse, and colorful dresses and large headdresses made each performance particularly impressive.
However, simpler dances have always been popular. Rural dances demonstrate the daily life, work and devotion of the common people. Full of energy and romance, untamed and spontaneous, festive and elegant, these dances reflect human emotion. Whether of regal elegance, popular entertainment or religious ritual, dance is an important part of South Korean culture. Gyeongju, former capital of the Silla Kingdom. After Silla united with the Korean Peninsula in 676 AD, its capital developed into one of the world's most influential cities. The Anapji Bond was where the royal family often enjoyed their leisure time. From the well-preserved observatory, a horse and carriage transports visitors to numerous hill tombs. Tumuli Park is situated in the centre of the city and contains 23 royal tombs that from the outside look like large green hills. A huge number of valuable finds were made here. Thus, the National Museum was created, in which more than 150,000 exhibits from prehistoric times right up to the Joseon dynasty are on display. Pots, vases, statues, and more than 10,000 works of art are exhibited here including suits of armor and a golden crown. The large valley contains many more holy places, such as the Bairi Samjon Syokbul Temple, whose three Buddha statues are famous for their enigmatic smiles. And Oriong Park, whose five hill tombs are each said to contain one section of Hyok Sai, as ordained by a divine snake. According to legend, a tiny child regained its eyesight while praying in front of the Buddha statue in the stone Bung Kwang Sa pagoda. The valley is dominated by the holy mountain of Nam San that was worshipped in the Silla period prior to the introduction of Buddhism. The pathway leads past several Buddha reliefs carved into the rock, past small temples and huge stones that are decorated with various religious motifs. The Borisa temple contains the country's finest Buddha statue. Buddha sits with crossed legs on a lotus blossom and his finger touches the ground. The Xiao Shulji Pond is also an historic site. Part of the pavilion was constructed on water. Each of its stone sections was once part of a nearby temple. Traces of the glorious era of the ancient Silla realm are to be found everywhere, as well as examples of Korean art in the many sculptures and reliefs. The underwater tomb of King Mun Mu is unique. For this, he chose an area on the eastern coast close to rocks that resemble a dragon. He intended to defend his realm even in death. The land section of the temple was designed to fend off Japanese invaders. It was completed by the king's son.
some kilometers from the old royal city at the foot of Toham San Mountain is South Korea's most impressive temple complex, Bulgak Sa. This temple in the land of Buddha was founded in 535 AD and was completed in the 10th year of King Gyeongdeok of Silla's reign. The huge complex is divided into two parts, each one of which contains various halls and sanctuaries. It's a truly amazing complex, and at that time Buddhism was in its infancy. Today's complex features only a tenth of the original. The main part was destroyed by the Japanese in 1592. Over the centuries, most of the wooden buildings were rebuilt, but the design of these architectural masterpieces has always been adhered to. Each of the stone sections has withstood the ravages of time, such as the bridges, steps and pagodas. More than 1400 years of religious arts are to be found here. The temple complex is of simple design and not only indicates the skill of the builders, but also the deep faith of the people of the time. A golden pig that was thought to bring good fortune was placed here in order to create a link with present-day beliefs. Here, luck, wealth and religion are each closely connected. On the 9th of December 1995, this sanctuary was duly recognized by UNESCO and added to the list of its most entertaining treasures of the world. This is the southeast of the peninsula, Gyeongsam Namdu province. We visit the very sheltered and well developed Gampo Harbor. During the day, several fishing boats lie at anchor here. At night, they prepare to head out to sea. Fishing has a long tradition in South Korea and is a vital part of its economy, although the negative effects of industrial overfishing is also apparent here. On the quay, there's a vast range of seafood on display and the nearby restaurants are always kept busy. For the locals, seafood provides a useful source of income, while for the tourists, the exotic underwater creatures are always a fascinating sight. The nearby Art Craft Village is well worth a visit. It features several workshops and souvenir shops. old pottery has been recreated and it's always interesting to see how clay is manipulated and given its finishing touches. The art of making pottery has a long tradition in South Korea and has been handed down from one generation to the next. The goldsmith's art is also demonstrated here, with skillful hands copying centuries-old pieces of jewellery. There are gems too.
Outside the workshops, large displays tempt visitors to part with their hard-earned cash. These souvenirs are popular with both Korean and Japanese tourists. Large, threatening statues of various warriors guard the main entrance to the hidden Golgul Temple complex in the Hamwal Mountains in the environs of Gyeongju. The temple buildings were built into the rocky mountain slope during the Silla realm by Buddhist monks from India. An ideal place in which to meditate. Steep steps lead upwards, past stone reliefs and temple buildings, to a number of terraces. A unique tradition is still practiced here, Sun Mudo, an ancient Zen martial art that was practiced by numerous Buddhist families. Sun Mudo means the way to enlightenment. It is achieved by way of the harmony of the body, spirit and breathing. It's quite a complex art in which meditation plays a major role. The pureness and harmony of the three parts of the karma, body, language and thought, are only achieved through intensive training. It is designed to create perfect spiritual focus and through the Samadhi, the spirit can finally reach Nirvana. The journey south takes us past the old village of Gyodong. It features many reminders of South Korea's history and culture. The settlement of Korea began 5,000 years ago and its first kingdom was founded in 2,333 BC. In the first century BC, three realms originated. Gogoyao, Baikji and Silla. These three realms covered the entire peninsula. During the Goryeo dynasty, the aristocracy became more powerful. Buddhism was the state religion and had a large influence on political life. The name Korea originates from Goryeo. Next followed the Joseon dynasty that ruled until 1910. Colorful and golden times indeed. Further south and close to the coast, we visit Tongdu Sa, one of the largest and most beautiful temples on the Korean peninsula. As many of the buildings are located in the surrounding mountains, at first sight, the temple complex doesn't look particularly large. However, large it most certainly is. The long pathway is adorned with colourful paper lamps and leads past old pillars and stone dragon heads. A large inner courtyard is surrounded by several buildings, temples, shrines and the monks' living quarters. The monks are mainly to be seen in the mornings and evenings. Tongdo Sa is known as a storage place for Sarira, a crystal clear liquid that is said to originate from within a monk who lives a pure life.
Such a sarira was once discovered following the burning of a monk. It was later brought here, where it's still stored now. However, the place in which it is stored is not open to the public. A noteworthy feature is the total lack of any Buddha statues in the temple's main hall. The common meditative prayer rituals with songs and drum beats according to the Buddhist doctrine have been undertaken for many centuries. The adjoining Tongdu Sa Museum features the country's largest collection of Buddhist temple paintings and around 30,000 artifacts. There are gongs, ancient tiles and wooden printing plates for the printing of Buddhist text. An ideal place in which to store religious artifacts. Perhaps the decision that was made during the Joseon dynasty had a positive side, as they permitted Buddhist monasteries only in the mountains. Thus the wonderful pureness of faith and simple beauty of the temple complexes have survived. Finally, we arrive at the coast. Just beyond Busan is a popular religious location, Yonggung Sa, a Buddhist temple on the coast. Stone statues with animal heads flank the route from the road to the seashore. Then the rocky bay with its temple buildings becomes visible. The god Bodhisattva is said to have visited this place on the back of a fiery dragon and to rest on the rocks in all his endless love and mercy. The temple was built by a devout monk in 1376 AD. Neong had been advisor to King Gong Min. One night, the god Bodhisattva showed him this place in a dream. The next day, the monk went in search of it and eventually found it here. Here, the faithful can obtain lucky religious charms. Busan, a harbour city on the southeastern corner of South Korea. Around 4 million inhabitants plus skyscrapers and the constant frenzy of city life. A traditional, colourfully dressed music group entertains in the light of the setting sun by the Gwangan Bridge that links nearby islands. South Korea's gateway to the world has grown and grown in recent years, and each and every space has been used to the full. Busan is the country's most important harbour for South Korea's export and import industries. It also has some good sandy beaches. The rocky areas of the bays are ideal for a walk. Following its civil war with the North, South Korea was a destitute, burned out and devastated country. But diligence, hard work and technical innovation eventually rewarded it with success. Here, the weather changes often and quickly. When it's raining, the Chaogaochi fish market is also worth a visit. It's the largest in South Korea, a feast for all the senses. It's mainly the women who sell the products, and the seafood is used to make a variety of tasty meals.
The huge variety of fish on display here ranges from halibut to amberjack and octopus. Most of what the sea has to offer is displayed here. In a nearby fish hall, both dried as well as fresh specialties are prepared and displayed for sale. It's popular with one and all. Sometimes a few of the larger fish attempt to escape from the freshwater basins. Close by, the fishing fleet lies at anchor, waiting for its next nocturnal adventure. Around 100 kilometers off South Korea's southern coast, and lapped by the waves of the East China Sea, is the Island of the Gods, Jeju Island. The Samyangdong Open Air Museum highlights the first century of the island's habitation, when the Kingdom of Silla gave way to the rule of the Goyo dynasty. Jeju Island is a unique holiday paradise, a volcanic island, with temples, waterfalls, tea plantations, and several leisure facilities. Many of the country's popular television series have been filmed here, a fact that attracts many sightseers. Now we've arrived on the south coast and visit one of the island's largest and most beautiful Buddhist temples, Wolpyeon Dong. It has been beautifully renovated. Nearby is the only waterfall in Asia that flows directly into the sea, the 23 meter high Zhongbang waterfall. The Jusang Holiday Rock that dominates the coastline is two kilometers long. A truly spectacular section of the coast south of Halasan Park. Now, another attraction, Pacific Island. A number of cute monkeys entertain their audiences with some amusing antics. Then follow the seals that play with a ball in the water. With their mouth, they knock the ball into a basketball hoop and hold swimming races. Next, it's the turn of the dolphins, who demonstrate why they're one of the world's most intelligent mammals. Here, the audiences are never disappointed. On the slopes of the large Hala volcanic mountain, the subtropical humidity accumulates and creates the perfect conditions for the cultivation of tea that has been grown here since the 3rd century AD. The western section of the south coast is called the Jean Mori coast and is only accessible on foot, with more steep, weather-beaten cliffs and a replica of a Dutch trading ship. In the nearby fishing village of Hyenyet is another of the island's attractions. It is here where most of the famous female divers live. For generations, these courageous women have dived for shells and seaweed. And they do this without any breathing apparatus at all. Commercial fishing with large ships and associated industries is done in the south. And it's also from here that there are boat trips to the nearby islands. Soon dark caves become visible. The tourists become a little scared, take a photograph and then the boat returns to the safety of the harbour. Submarine trips on a tiny submersible are also available so visitors are able to explore the splendid underwater world without getting wet.
The region's large amount of luxurious hotels and holiday resorts can accommodate many guests. And for Koreans as well as the Japanese, Jeju Island has, due to its tropical climate, become a very popular honeymoon destination. When during dinner a volcano erupts and laser gods battle against each other, the Korean people are reminded of the fact that they have withstood invasion by the Mongols, the Chinese and the Japanese. At the climax of the show, a fiery dragon appears from out of the water. His sole task, to protect glorious South Korea.